What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes. Friday, May 3rd, 2024. Love me Fridays. We're heading to our first service call of the day. We have a customer that has an air conditioning issue. Let's go see what's going on. Six minutes to drive from Woodmere to Wantaw. Just marked it in House Call Pro that start my time. Arrived. Corner house. We're going to park on the side street so it's best to access. Little known House Call Pro. Little things like this make a big difference. Good morning, Mike. How are you, sir? Nice to see you again. You as well. How are you? Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Do you need to get in, out, up, down? Are the filters clean? I get everything. Okay. There's a special note that you want us to check the line set with the with the light. Well, if if you, you know that involves ripping up all the insulation. Oh, okay. Well, well, maybe let's go. In the, I'll meet you in the back. Okay. We can walk sure. Through it. No problem. There's a uh, note on the service call that. Um, wants to check the line set with a black light to see if the leak has been sealed, has not, and what to do, so. How you been, okay? Uh, busy, thank God, you? Good. Oh, you know, doing your thing, doing your thing. I hear you. So you might not remember it. I remember. This is the stupid pipe they get buried. I know, you unfinished the... basement, went across, and then you thought maybe it was kinked in one corner, maybe, and. Yeah, it's not finished. Yeah. They, they buried it behind the ductwork. Correct. And you can't see it, and yes. you'll never be able to get to it. Correct. But I thought maybe the- Now, did we come back again after we added the refrigerant and the sealant, or that we did that during that one visit? One visit. Okay, so we may, it may pay to, to check again. Did it cool for the entire season well? Well, you, you did it at the, in the end of the season. We did, you we did, really? You came in October. Oh, so, really? I thought that was like in spring, no? Same time flies. Time does fly. So this was the unit you put this stuff in. Okay. But I want you to check both today. Okay. Because the other day when it was warm out, yes. even this unit does the upstairs. I would say it got to like 73-ish, but it couldn't really get below that. It's what did you have it set to? 71. And that's abnormal, correct? Abnormal, yeah. Okay. But now this one hasn't had a, a, any issue. Nothing. That maybe it just needs yeah. a little boost, you know? So if you call correctly, you know, these Lux air systems, uh, they, they utilize, like several other manufacturers, um, contractor grade systems, they utilize what we call micro channel coils. Yeah, that's which the are shit. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. give me a little but education. You said it exactly. So, no, I, know. Uh, I know. They're notorious yeah. for, for uh, refrigerant Spring, leaks. Spring and a leak. Yeah, so. Uh, well, that's right. why you put that green shit in. Yeah, the dye with, with, with the sealant, without the sealant. With. Okay. And then, and then the hope was, and that's why I said, what was the next step? Like maybe you would see a leak somewhere. Well, I'll get the tools. We'll take the covers off. We'll take a look and uh, go from there. Check both. And sure. Then, do you need to see what I was talking about with that pipe? No, set? I remember. Okay. Especially like over here, there was something we we, we were digging right. over here with something right. I believe. The generator guys, when they put it in, Correct. I thought maybe they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, but it was fine. I remember we we we, we cut you away some like insulation. A thing on your ears. You were listening. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, with refrigerant leaks, there's five things you can do. Number one, you can do nothing. Number two, we can add refrigerant. Number three, we can add a sealant. Number four, we can look for the leak and talk about repairs. And then number five, we can replace the system, which is the only real way of guarantee, you know, the whole entire job. There'll be a link in the description box down below if you want to look at the sheet of five things to discuss when you have a refrigerant leak. All right, so this is the unit that's in question. This is the one with the Three and a half ton R410A system. Let's start by pulling power from the unit. Let's take the entire condenser fan motor shroud off and we'll look for leaks with the ultraviolet light. All right, so we got the condenser shroud motor uh, removed. On the Lux Air, there's a disconnect, a Molex connector there. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to look at the underside of the condenser fan motor. You can see that we have oil residue. That's because that sealed, that sealed packed ring of, of oil has failed. And in the future, this fan motor is gonna die now. Right now it works and I'm sure it'll be fine, but 
just something to make note of. All right, so we use the ultraviolet glasses, the ultraviolet light, nothing visible on the condensing coil, the connections, the high pressure switch, nothing is visible here. So we will continue on with the tune up, checking the capacitor and the contactor for um, specifications. All right, the 45.5 dual capacitor tested to 45.5 and 5.2 on the condenser fan motor and the hermetically sealed terminal, too common, respectfully. We tested the resistance between both sides of the coil, 24 volt coil on the contactor, and we had 17 uh, ohms resistance, so that's good. As long as it's in the teens, we're good. All right, so I reassembled the, uh, the unit, put back together the cover for the electrical compartment, I have my Testo 557 set up. I have my temperature probes, my clamp-on temperature probes hooked onto my liquid and my suction line. And uh, we're reading some pressures. System is off right now. I just sent the homeowner inside to uh, turn the thermostats on. And I said, listen, when you turn the first floor on and set it to a low temperature, turn the second floor on as well. I have that disconnect pulled, that disconnect pulled. I don't know if you just heard that click of the contact or the contact or this one's pulled in. This one's also pulled and you can also put your ear up to it. You can hear that hum of the contact being pulled in. It's a sure sign that we're getting 24 volts from the outdoor, uh, the indoor unit uh, to turn on. Standing pressure, we're at 143 on my high and low. Uh, even temperature of 50, temperature equals pressure. Remember that folks. And our probes are reading 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything here is in Fahrenheit. So uh, let's turn the power on here and let's see how she's behaving. All right, we are definitely undercharged. Low side of 41.8 PSI, high side of 161. We should be at least 100, 110 on the low and 2, 210 on the high, even though it's you know, a little cold, cool out today. 53 degrees it should still be higher all right so we checked the indoor coil uh, with the ultraviolet light we didn't pull it out i took the front cover off i removed that little piece of metal it's like on a triangle on the a coil so i looked inside there are three rows of coil but nothing visible on the exposed sides i got my money on the micro channel coil <sighs> it sucks and i already know what he's gonna do i had more refrigerant and uh rolled dice all right, well, now we're working on the second floor system, and what prompted us here today is that last week, or earlier this week, on the weekend when it was like 80 degrees, um, the system could not maintain 73 degrees. The system is running for about two minutes now, 44 and 168, almost identical conditions to the first floor system. Four pounds of 410A and the sealant to second floor system. First floor system, nitrogen. 246.3 and four. Both service valves are closed. And we're gonna come back. All right, we are five minutes into a uh, pressure test. One of the features of the Testo 557 is that I could do a pressure leak test uh, using just hoses and no micron gauge, no nothing. Um, but we dropped 0.8 PSI um, in five minutes and 21 seconds. So let's just for shits and giggles, let's open up one of the service valves, which are closed, right? And let's see. What happens? You notice that the pressure is now increasing. See that? Now we're back to that. Now we're positive. Look at that. Just by cracking open our liquid line. So the pressure that's in my condensing coil is greater than the pressure in the, su the suction and liquid line and the evaporator coil inside. So now we, uh, cl I close that back up. Let's stop this test. Let's do a new test, right? We're at 247.6 PSI. Let's start that test and let's see what happens. 
All right, a minute into it, negative one, point one, sorry. So we're gonna uh, stop this tester right now, 245.2. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 10 after 10, I've been here since 8.05 in the morning. Well, customer decided to replace the air handler and the line set. The line set's kind of hidden behind the supply plenum. I guess they installed that first and then they put the plenum in. So we're placing the line set from the condensing unit outside to the air handler, including the air handler. Um, using the House Call Pro, I sent them an estimate while I was on site. He marked it approved. My office saw the approval and they're already starting on working on outsourcing the material for the job. And then hopefully today or Monday, we'll be able to schedule the installation with the homeowner. Utilizing technology to make your company more efficient and effective is the reason why Pipe Doctor, not only in New York, but also Pipe Doctor of Central Florida, uses House Call Pro. Thank you so much for watching. If you're in the New York metropolitan area and you need a great HVAC company, give me a call, 516-348-6300. If you're in the Central Florida Orlando region, give me a call at 407-375-1100. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one. Be well, God bless, stay safe.